In the old days, man tried to catch a glimpse of the future in the strangest of ways. They locked themselves in dark rooms, not partaking of food and drink. At the stroke of midnight, they ventured out into the night, through the dark woods, where strange creatures roamed. To see if they would be wealthy, to see if they would be happy, to see if they would live, to see if they would be loved. Welcome everybody. Today we're starting a let's play of Year Walk. Um, I don't really know anything about this. Uh, <clears throat> it's been in my library for a while. Never touched it. And I just, you know, give it a go, see how it goes. Um, this is not a native Linux game. And I installed it through Steam and it set up everything okay downloaded uh, an older version of Proton which I assume is the officially supported version because this is a whitelisted game by Valve and the Steam uh, people who deal with this so let's take a look so use a D left or right arrow keys to walk. I presume we can also click on things. We're looking around, kind of follows the mouse a bit. Okay. When there's a path leading north, press W or up to cross it. Okay. I guess the path here is this one. No. There. Okay. There's a down arrow there that we could take a look at. Okay. We get to spin it. sure what it does. Like a locking mechanism. Okay. Let's go back. A tree stump, maybe. Okay. Hello. There you are. I've been waiting for you all day. You should not go outside without a hat on a cold day like this. You'll freeze your ears off. And I'm quite fond of the person those ears belong to. Did anyone see you come in here? Now you're being silly. You know that I'm not ashamed of you. It's not that. I like you very much. But you and I come from different worlds. He's waiting for my answer. I said I'd give it to him next year. And this is the last day of this year. Now you're being unfair. This isn't any easier for me. I don't like it when you're like this. Calm down. You're walking. I hope you're joking. 
You do remember what happened to my cousin, don't you? Promise me you won't do anything foolish. You're not supposed to know what happens in the future. You should hurry home to your cottage and get some rest. I'm getting d it's getting dark soon. Hurry home to your cottage. You should probably go. You really should hurry home now. It's getting dark soon. Hurry home to your cottage. Okay. Can't go up, can't move around. Okay, so we exit. Way in. Doesn't appear to be anything there. Okay, so we go back. Should you find yourself lost, clues can be found in the hints menu. Okay. Interesting. Can we go up? No. Okay, so we go this way. this side. Sorry about that. Uh, there was some chatter going on elsewhere. 
I just need to let that happen. So, let's see, we have, we've been to that, came from here, so. And then we've got this path here. Uh, it's got a sign, oh, there's a wall, and a gate. Uh -huh. Okay. friend who's not here. Okay. No way forward there. So it's not just clicking on things, we gotta interact. Okay, so this is a furnace of some kind. Bakery. What would we put in there? These ruins, headstones. So we've got a map. Okay, cool. So we're down here. Right, this is the end. So go up. And then right will get us another headstone. Is this everywhere or just everywhere we've been? I don't think it's everywhere we've been, because I don't think we've been here. Definitely haven't been here. That's behind the gate. So... We didn't see that. I guess the X... Each X marks where we have or haven't been, I think. No, because we haven't been through here, so, yeah. Okay. And encyclopedia. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. Earwalk. The Huldra. The Brook Horse. The Miling. The 
Night Raven, The Church Grim. The Year Walk Encyclopedia is a collaborative effort between Simogo and Theodore Almstein, Almsten, who is the author of all the written content. Theodore Amsten Curriculum Vitae was born in Stockholm 68, but spent most of his youth in Edinburgh where his mother was born. He graduated from London's University in 92 and is a doctor of philosophy at the Faculty of Ethnology. His lectures on the manifestation of the evil in folklore has been full every term from 98 onwards. Theodore has written three books on Scandinavian folklore. The Crone's Tongue has been translated into 16 languages and received the prestigious Hornet Award in 99. He has had numerous appearances in Swedish television and an unaired children's short film called The Grim was partially based on Theodore's research. Okay, so we can get into these. Uh, Year walking was at its core a vision quest with the purpose being uh, to foresee the future. There were very rigid rules concerning the year walk and not adhering to them could prove very dangerous, even fatal. How the practice of year walking came to be is shrouded in mystery, but it seems to have been a widespread practice in Sweden until the beginning of the 19th century and in some rural areas as late as the beginning of the 20th century. The practice was likely over a thousand years old and most certainly pagan. Year walking varied greatly regionally and even locally there might have been differences between one village and the next. All the variations had a couple of elements in common though. A year walk could not be done on any common day. There were certain days of the year when the gate was opened, generally in liaison with important festival days such as May Day, Midsummer's Eve or Christmas Eve, and most commonly New Year's Eve. A year walker could not partake of any of the food or drink, drinks that were served on these days, a sacrifice of no little significance since these feasts were some of the rare occasions when food would be plentiful and varied. A year walker had to avoid other people, so they commonly locked themselves in dark rooms and were not allowed to see a fire for the entire day. Perhaps not a vast sacrifice on Midsummer's Eve, but on cold winter days it would be uncomfortable at least, if not hazardous. If the year walker followed these steps he would leave his dark room at the stroke of midnight. This would be his last chance to cancel the year walk. Once he ventured out there was no turning back. The church was the final destination for a year walker. On his way, he would typically encounter a number of supernatural creatures which would pose a threat physically, mentally, and spiritually. If a year walker made it to the cemetery, he would walk around the church in an intricate pattern. This would open the year walker's eyes to the future, but it would also lure out the church grim. After having completed the year walk, the walker would see visions that could manifest themselves in different manners. When the year walker left the cemetery, he might, for instance, see a sombre procession of dancers dressed in their finest church clothes. These would be the people that would die the following year. A reoccurring theme is, of course, the year walker who meets his own ghost on the road. Another story tells of how the walker would see newly dug graves. Love played a great part, too so a walker would typically meet wedding processions or even attend weddings yet to come. One testimony from the late 19th century tells of a mental patient named Martin Nilsson who described his visions as otherworldly experiences. Before I saw what happened next year, I lived among the stars. I lived there for many lifetimes, it seemed. What do I care for the next year? Time has already ended. Today the practice seems to be almost entirely forgotten. The Church Grim. Okay, so it loops around. Um, the Huldra. The Huldra is known to have played a part in Norse mythology, but she is likely of an even older origin from when man lived off the forest rather than the fields. The Huldra was the guardian 
the forest. She tended to the trees, plants and animals. A single large tree in a grove surrounded by smaller trees was often considered to be the Huldra's home, or even the Huldra herself. In most stories, she presented herself as a beautiful young woman. This was, however, not her real appearance. Very few saw the Huldra's true face, and even fewer lived to speak of it. She was often described as a lonely and woeful, woe-filled creature. Her relationship with humans was very complex. She could enthrall a man with her beautiful song and lure him deeper and deeper into the forest, where she either wedded or killed him. The men kissed by the Huldra became apathetic and slow. According to some accounts, the Huldra was a positive force. If a hunter was kind to the Huldra, she might blow her breath down the barrel of his rifle, which would bless his hunt. Colliers considered her their friends as she kept fires from spreading from their charcoal kiln. She also helped those who willingly offered their blood to her, but this was dangerous as the Huldra might drink the giver dry. The Huldra was thus capable of doing both good and bad deeds. It was very hard to predict whether she would help or harm, since she played by rules known only to her. Okay, it's interesting. Um, let's take a look at the journal. You gotta sign in for this. I... Okay, let's just try something. No, <laughs> I don't know what that is. Uh, hints, settings. Yeah, no, we're good with the settings. Okay, interesting. I wonder does. I have no idea about the journal. Okay, maybe there's a password and login password you can find in the game. It's interesting. Uh, hints. Okay. Reveal hint one. Do we want to do that just yet? No, not just yet. Let's see. Okay, so we go back across. Now we are here. There's a thing here. Take a look. That I think that does it have an eye underneath it to indicate that we can look at it? No. Okay, so let's go to the right and get the path forward here, which is that. I don't think there's any other path that we can get. Oh Okay. Okay. So we're following. We're interacting. No. Nope. Okay. Where are you bringing us? Uh, this, I think, is where we were looking on the map. There was no path in him. There is a path. Okay. Oh. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's take a look at the map. Yeah, we are up here where I thought. Um, don't know what that's doing for us. Okay. Back out. Let's move over. No, no. Uh, let's take a look. Hints. 
part three. Okay. So we were on part two, now we're on part three. Do we want to reveal any hints? We still don't have that. Um, I don't know if we want to do anything. Nothing on either side here. Well, we have this thing again. Oh. There we go. Oh. Okay. A little creepy. Okay, so thank you for joining me. I think we'll leave it there for the moment. Um, and when we come back, we will explore this. Uh, I hope you like this. I hope you come back for more. Uh, if you did like it, do the thing. Uh, see you next time. <laughs>